principal engineer from Autodesk. Uh, he is actually leading the uh, Forge API platform in Singapore. He will be talking about the East, West, and North, South API traffic management strategy. So uh, thanks, Ashwin. So I, I pass the time to you. OK. okay. Um, yes. Can you share your screen? OK. OK. OK, so I pass it on to you. All right, yeah. Thank you, Patrick. So hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Ashwin from Autodesk, uh, and I'll be talking about how we are managing the east-west and uh, north-south traffic uh, uh, in uh, Forge API platform, which is our cloud platform for Autodesk. And this is my first presentation in an online conference. OK, so let's start with a quick introduction of uh, what we do at Autodesk. Uh, in Autodesk, we help our customers uh, who design and make everything from skyscrapers to a smart cars and um, like bridges and uh, uh, blockbuster movies. So um, our tools automate how things are designed in the digital world and uh, made in the physical world. So this is what we do in Autodesk. So as I said, I work for a platform um, called Forge. So Forge uh, is a platform which is mainly set of web services and components which are powering the future of making things. Uh, so these are our uh, customers uh, that you see on the screen. So our customers are Autodesk products, the apps that, we, that the customers use, uh, the end customers like Jaden, Johnson Controls, Toshiba, and there's like a lot more big list of customers. Uh, also third-party developers who build components for Autodesk. So the, these are all the customers who are actually uh, making calls to our Forge platform. Um, so um yeah so when we come talk about uh, traffic on forge api platform so we are serving almost uh, it's more than 13 billion calls per month and it's pretty much doubling uh, every year and uh, uh, the growth in the traffic uh, you know the user traffic demands for growth in service to service communication as well uh, so right now if, if i compare uh, the service to service communication is almost 60% of the traffic that we receive and as I said, like it's almost doubling every year uh, based on the user traffic increase. Uh, so, so again, I mean, as I said, like this is all uh, Forge, which is exposing Autodesk products as APIs. So all the traffic is um, coming to Forge APIs. So let's let's look at uh, what we have uh, in the rest of the agenda. Um, okay, so I'll start with basic. Um, let's talk about what is a need for an API gateway pattern. Um, and uh, I'll introduce you to the terminology of North, South, and East, West. Uh, then we'll do a small difference. Uh, like I'll, I'll, I'll show a basic difference of uh, what is uh, um, API gateway and uh, well, like you know how it compares with service mesh. And finally, uh, I'll focus more on uh, how we manage uh, North, South, and East, West traffic, uh, and and I'll share some of our experiences comparing these two platforms and uh, our future roadmap, which is uh, using an app mesh. Okay. So, what is the need for uh, uh, a API gateway pattern? So, le let's start with a basic uh, client to microservice communication that we are all familiar with, and uh, um, it's. It's a basic app which makes a request uh, to direct microservices. So I'll take an example of uh, uh, Amazon.com from my recent purchase. So as you can see, there's a lot of information that is uh, fetch uh, on, on a web page uh, in this scenario. It's calling multiple microservices trying to get, get the uh, purchase date, uh, the user rating, then um, talking about uh, like you know the shipping details, uh, the stock availability, the uh, frequency suggestion service. So there's a lot more which is shown here. So there's like a lot of uh, microservices. Like let's say from some something like product info. There's a shipping service. There's inventory review order service. There's so many things coming into picture. So what if uh, we have to communicate to all of these services as um, you know like individually, as in like uh, coming you know uh, coming to the current picture. Uh, in today's world, we don't, we are not locked to UI uh, or a web anymore. So, so there's multiple types of customers. We all know that, like uh, we we all use mobiles, different types of interfaces. So, when 
the communication is happening across all these kind of microservices think of what will happen if uh, every customer is calling um, all these microservices independently which is mostly it, it becomes chatty and the round trips will add to the network latencies there's a lot of uh, cross cutting concerns that has to be managed individually by microservices um, again then uh, microservices being exposed uh, widely there's attack surface that also uh, expanded widely due to this uh, the last thing is not every consumer can support all the protocol protocols um, you know that uh, microservices support uh, probably this is something uh, you know not not many uh, at least the latest uh, uh, the companies that follow the latest trend don't don't do this but i know a lot of companies who still do the microservice chattiness and uh, you know uh, interact with from the consumer uh, from the clients directly so so how do we solve this? Uh, we need something like an intermediate gateway or a proxy to address all these uh, issues that I've talked about. So it, an API gateway pattern talks about um, um, you know, this intermediate uh, gateway layer, which hides the service complexity and acts as a reverse proxy. So this is actually helping to aggregate multiple requests, like um, in, a, in, in the example that, we, uh, that I'm gonna give for, um, Autodesk. So we aggregate uh, things like authentication, authorization. Uh, everything happens on on the call. Uh, when when you make a request, that's all like you know under the hood, which is happening uh, along with your request. So uh, and there's services who aggregate some functionality. Um, it's not business functionality, but again uh, for the due diligence of this uh, request uh, validation, there's so things that gets aggregated and uh, the backend call is made. So this, these kind of aggregations, and um, again, coming to a single point of entry, there's things that you can do a lot of uh, cross-cutting concerns. So you can manage all, all these uh, in this layer. Uh, and again, uh, so if you have uh, non-HTTP compliant interfaces, you can uh, use this as a proxy. Uh, having said all these advantages, it, there can be trade-offs if we don't design the API gateway properly, as I was giving an example. So if, if, if you are treating a single point of entry, there can be a risk of you know, a single point of failure. So what we do is we uh, you know, proxy or uh, create an API gateway per uh, product or per service uh, that is back, um, uh, you know, uh, the product is backing. So, that helps in you know making it self service for all the service owners uh, but again you need a platform team to manage uh, creating these self service uh, um, uh, you know uh, uh, tools and um, managing all this and we are exactly uh, uh, doing that uh, as part of the platform team and there's a lot a few more uh, trade offs that we might have to deal with like the additional latency that gets added uh, due to this hop but again broader gains uh, outweigh this problem and you don't see much i'll talk about uh, i'll talk more about uh, uh, you know the latency that we see on api gateway platform um, then you need to scale the platform properly then uh, you need to make sure people are not customizing adding business logic on this layer because we have seen uh, some cases where uh, the business logic is tied and you can't apply more enhancements so that we have to be careful and we are always cautious about this fact so let's uh, let me introduce you to this concept of north south and east west uh, right so this is basically a network terminology if you for those who are not familiar and um, uh, north south traffic is basically a traffic coming from the customers into our um, uh, our network basically so it's mostly the end traffic coming from outside the network and east west traffic is between the services uh, which is inside your data center or inside your network so this is uh, what the terminology means so north south is customer traffic east east west is mostly the traffic between service to service so before getting into what we do at Forge, uh, how we manage traffic at Forge, I'm going to introduce you to uh, basic differences between API Gateway and Service Mesh. Uh, again, my intention is not to explain you Service Mesh, but uh, uh, I want to explain where these uh, fit exactly and uh, how we are going to use Service Mesh in future. So uh, I'll talk about that in our roadmap. So this is a very basic comparison, as I said, uh, just for knowledge. and. Uh, uh, Again, I'm not getting into full detail. So service mesh is responsible for managing and controlling uh, network traffic between services. 
So that's that's what service mesh is. This is on the network layer management. So coming to comparisons, when we talk about traffic flows, uh, API Gateway can actually manage traffic from north south and east west. Uh, so if, if I'll talk more about how this uh, differentiation is, uh, but um, um, something like API Gateway management, uh, API management platform can actually manage the north south traffic and uh, internally it it is designed to use uh, like a east west uh, gateway. Whereas on the service mesh, um, it it is mainly designed for service to service communication, and uh, it has a lot more advanced uh, traffic management capabilities uh, like request routing, the fault injection, the traffic shift shifting, uh, and uh, resiliency patterns built in, uh, the traffic mirroring. So there's a lot more advanced feature that service mesh supports for service to service communication, uh, and the main responsibility uh, between these two is uh, api gateway is meant for customer facing um, uh, you know like uh, exposing apis uh, or use it internally for uh, all business uh, internal customers basically for business functions uh, exposing them as apis uh, your services as apis and service mesh is used to manage and control the services inside the network uh, that's the main difference coming to security API Gateway uh, is designed to handle all the authorization, authentication, the protection from DDoS, um, IP filtering. All, all, all these things can be built in. Uh, it's, it's built in in uh, API Gateway. It depends on how you, uh, you know, configure them. Uh, whereas Service Mesh is mainly about um, uh, the network level things where uh, you can have a mutual TLS uh, for uh, better uh, you know, security. Uh, and end, end user uh, authentication verification, it also supports uh, OAuth verification in, uh, if you want to. Uh, then service to service uh, role based access and uh, you know, attribute based uh, access control uh, in case you want to go deeper level of uh, uh, security between services. Um, coming to protocols, again, uh, API Gateway is pretty much straightforward. It's uh, HTTP uh, web sockets and uh, the, uh, like, you know, the uh, standard stuff. Uh, service mesh can actually give you more control on uh, HTTP and the TCP layer. You can go to le layer uh, seven, uh, layer four, uh, and then um, uh, also the gRPC interface. Uh, it is a lot more powerful in terms of service to service, as I said. Um, and then again, obvious thing uh, is the request flow happens uh, between end consumer to services in case of an API gateway. And service mesh has something like uh, something called sidecar proxies. Basically, this is like a side uh, side proxy sits along with your application container, and uh, this side proxy is the one which is making all the calls for you. So what you are doing is only interacting with this side proxy. You're making all the calls through the proxy, and proxies are the actual ones talking, uh, you know, in the in a network. So uh, all the policies, everything that you are doing is managed through a control plane. And the uh, configuration is applied on the proxies, and they have the intelligence to you know route and manage uh, your traffic. Uh, again, traffic coming from outside is always through an in, uh, ingress gateway. In terms of uh, uh, in the case of uh, service mesh, um, coming to resiliency features, uh, like these are built in for service mesh, uh, whereas a uh, lot of API gateway platforms support it. But uh, mostly, you might have to you know extend the support to build the resiliency uh, features. Uh, coming to observability, um, there will be platforms like Apigee provide a pretty good, uh, um, you know, observability. Um, uh, but uh, service mesh, on the other hand, actually is pretty raw. Like I mean, you you get a lot of uh, network level communication details, which you can you know uh, design or uh, represent it in your own way. So it's pretty powerful. Um, so with this comparison, let's understand what we do at uh, Forge. So I'll start with the North South traffic, uh, which is uh, our Forge API platform for customers. Um, this is how it looks like. Uh, sorry, uh, this is how it is. Um, we we use uh, Apigee as our uh, API management platform, and it is responsible for a lot of uh, cross-cutting concerns. So starting with security, we do uh, authentication, authorization, um, and uh, you know safeguard uh, from attacks uh, like DDoS and a lot more. Um, so this acts like a, a WAF as well, uh, uh, an application framework. Um, so there's a lot of security controls in place, basically. Uh, and then the rate limiting, basically, uh, APG supports some different types of rate limiting. What we use is a quota, uh, which is like allocating certain quota for uh, every customer. 
and uh, a spike arrest where ba basically how if there's like spike of calls uh, how do you you know smoothen the traffic out so those kind of stuff uh, observability uh, again as i said it has a pretty good uh, observability uh, platform where you can monitor traffic troubleshoot uh, trace pretty well so all, all that kind of stuff um so there are some products which needs customization to handle uh, customer traffic so what we do is uh, we extend policies uh, 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 again what we part of platform team do is like we have a framework where we allow our uh, service owners to build their own customization uh, uh, again uh, that is uh, following the apigs uh, standard which is a javascript um, they can actually customize these um, uh, request and responses and add it into the platform uh, which platform uh, converts it into a deployable uh, Go, you know, uh, archive which can be deployed on RPG. Um, then uh, talking about metering, um, so since RPG is a platform that we use uh, for uh, external facing, so there's um, we need to track um, you know the usage of uh, API usage of the cust customers and uh, allow them to subscribe to our APIs. Um, uh, you know um, all the products that we expose in Forge. Uh, they have. I'll, I'll talk more about um, how users interact uh, and subscribe to our platforms in the dev portal in the next slide. But um, uh, the main idea here is to meter uh, their usage, show them the uh, you know their usage metrics, and charge them uh, in terms of cloud credits. Cloud credits is basically our currency. Um, so all that happens uh, on this layer. Uh, uh, again, this is custom built by us. We don't use a built-in uh, APG for this. Um, then one of the very important one is uh, the regionalization. Basically, uh, when we are uh, you know complying with uh, uh, standards like GDPR and all, so you need to make sure the data sovereignty is respected and uh, the data is stored in uh, respective countries. So for a platform like APM, which is you know hosted uh, globally. Uh, you need to manage how the redirection happens between these, and uh, we have a built-in, uh, like custom-built uh, regionalization uh, platform that we manage as well, a part of our platform. Uh, then finally, caching is uh, uh, an important part of the platform because um, uh, handling billions of calls, you need to make sure not everything is being, uh, you know, uh, going to all the services. So this is pretty important, um, and and as you can see, overall. The, there's end customers, there's a product um, backing, uh, you know, the product backends also uh, use this. Um, and originally we were using this API management platform for both east-west and, and north-south uh, traffic. But as I said, 60% of the traffic is actually, um, you know, uh, internal, which is east-west. So how do we solve that? Um, so yeah, before talking about the east-west, um, as I said, um, uh, for developer convenience, um, part of north-south, we need to give them a you know a portal where they can manage or you know control uh, how they are subscribing to the products how um, how they can track their usage um, and let them know what kind of uh, you know um, um, charges or like cloud trails are being used so this is the developer portal which is forge.autodesk.com where users go and uh, subscribe to the apis they purchase cloud credits they can generate uh, what uh, you know the client uh, or specific client ID secret tokens, and if they're using um, you know like a third-party vendor uh, want to integrate a three-leg flow, there's callback URLs that you can provide. All the, all this self-management uh, capabilities are provided on uh, the de developer portal platform. Um, then let's talk more about uh, what we do for internal service-to-service -service communication. We have custom built uh, an internal uh, uh, solution uh, using a API, uh, AWS API Gateway. So for all the calls that is flowing between services, um, you know what we have done as a first thing was to secure the communication, first of all. So we use Transit Gateway, which is uh, uh, like a network hub for connecting all the VPCs. Um, so what this does is uh, it's actually locking all the communication uh, within AWS network for Autodesk. So only Autodesk specific VPCs are connected. So it's already isolated from the rest of the internet and uh, it's specific to uh, Autodesk. So this is a boundaries. Uh, then uh, different there's different types of customers, ECS, EC2 based, like there's uh, uh, all sorts of customer who need a proxy between um, uh, the products, um, right? So what we have done is 
we have exposed private APIs. So uh, AWS supports something called as private, uh, which is you know uh, only accessible based on the resource policy that you set. So it only allows uh, traffic from specified uh, VPC, which will be here, and it, the communication happens over VPC endpoint. And we use Lambda. Again, API Gateway uh, from AWS is pretty basic. It's not as powerful as API management platforms uh, uh, out there. So it's pretty basic. It helps you do throttling uh, the basic uh, uh, you know, uh, standard stuff of an API Gateway. Uh, so you cannot do customization as much as you want. So what we have done is added uh, an additional layer of Lambda uh, with uh, Lambda integration with API Gateway. Now, all the customization that we need uh, for internal communications happen at this layer. And in spite of you know, uh, adding this layer and adding customization, overall latency of this platform has been less than 25 milliseconds 25 milliseconds basically and uh, the uh, i'll talk more about you know what benefits we have seen doing this but uh, cost has been the biggest factor uh, uh, for uh, you know the, for moving into this and and finally um, this layer is responsible for capturing um, all the observability metrics and uh, you know uh, rest of the stuff uh, so this is uh, the basic comparison um, like, uh, from our experience. Um, so Apigee, again, is a API management platform. Uh, it's pretty expensive uh, for those who understand how API management uh, platform works. Um, probably Apigee might be a lot expensive than other platforms, but it's still a lot of saving when we started using uh, API gateway platforms. It's, I've written as 50%, but uh, this is with, you know, like a, um, a conservative approach, and if we start optimizing more, um, like we can save a lot more on on this. Availability-wise, in spite of you know multiple hops uh, that we have introduced, it has always been above four nines, um, uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, th this has been consistent throughout. Uh, the performance, as I said, it's mostly uh, below twenty-five milliseconds, including the API gateway and the uh, Lambda layer. So th that layer is uh, pretty uh, performant. Um, uh, and as your traffic grows, like on very, very high loads, what we have observed is the P90, 95, 99s, these are much better uh, compared to any other platform. So there's a lot of reuse that happens uh, uh, under the hood, uh, I guess, in uh, AWS. So it gives us much, be much, much uh, better uh, performance on uh, higher uh, percentiles. Um, what we have tested uh, so far is uh, above our demand. Uh, we have tested uh, almost like 15,000 transactions per second, and it pretty much scales well, uh, better than uh, what we have seen on other platforms. Security-wise, as I already said, it's guarded, uh, uh, isolated from uh, the rest of the network, and it's only between required VPCs, basically, that do not the full network. It's only required VPCs are peered together. And uh, finally, at least compare with Apigee, what we have observed is uh, there's a, a request isolation. Basically, Apigee uh, has a shared infrastructure. Uh, they have message processes which are shared across customers. Probably for Autodesk, there's dedicated, but there are other layers uh, which are shared. And we have seen some uh, you know, uh, bad customers impacting those layers. But coming to East West, uh, you, you know, you know, you might want to avoid all these things. Uh, you are only interested in doing some uh, basic authorization. You'll be interested uh, to do some routing between uh, applications. So you don't need a lot of API management capabilities on this layer. So with Lambda, the blast radius is controlled, uh, especially uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you have you have uh, uh, the request isolation because of uh, that. The control is pretty uh, pretty good. Um, so th these are the basic comparisons. And finally, talking about our roadmap. Um, so what we intend to do is uh, uh, take the power of service mesh as well. So app, uh, we are partnered with uh, AWS uh, to uh, work on AWS app mesh. Uh, and as I introduce you to service mesh, so basically uh, most of our services ha are containerized and you know there, there can be a site proxy introduced uh, for these uh, services and um, it can be part of a, a mesh and app mesh is uh, is a, a application level networking which makes it easier for services to communicate uh, so this this is actually helping in abstracting out the deployment and operational overhead uh, for the owners and uh, compared to probably api gateway or apim the network latencies will be pretty low because uh, it's between um, service to service uh, with a little extra addition of uh, uh, the proxy that ended the sidecar proxy, which is pretty uh, performant. Uh, 
and uh, um, yeah i mean there are legacy services for which we'll be using private api gateway as uh, you know an ingress gateway so this is like a um, um, alignment to the future uh, for what we are doing right now so so there is uh, I, like putting it all together there's north south api management which is apigee there's uh, um, like east west ingress gateway which is like a private api using uh, api gateway then there's a service mesh which is uh, like giving you a raw control on how the uh, network level traffic uh, is communicating so this is how uh, an api management an api gateway and a service mesh is complementing each other and uh, how we are uh, designing in autodesk for uh, api platforms so this is pretty much about what we do okay uh, it was useful. Yeah, thanks, Ashwin, for your for your sharing. So maybe just uh, one quick question I, I I get from the cow. So um, some someone is asking uh, what kind of API gateway software you are actually using along with uh, Lambda. Do you have any quick feedback on that one? Yeah, so we use uh, AWS API gateway uh, backed by Lambda. Mm, okay, okay. And another uh, quick question. So um, you implement the shared So can you share one maybe interesting uh, ex experience or lesson that when you implement the shared uh, can you share one interesting experience when you're doing the, the shared implementation? Uh, could you repeat that? When implementing oh, okay. Do, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, you share about your strategy. So can you share one, uh, one example that uh, interesting experience when you actually implement that? Uh, can you share one, one story? Yep. Okay. So I guess, um, uh, you know, Apigee or API management platform is so powerful. Uh, you know, people, you, if you are already on something like that, you need to convince people uh, to move to something like an internal API uh, gateway. Um, so you need to make it so powerful and show them the benefits of how you are going to take advantage. So we, we worked hard to reduce the latency of this under mm. 25 milliseconds and uh, providing the security. So it was like uh, the hard work and the groundwork that we did, which was uh, what make, made them convince, uh, you know, uh, then, then then the majority of the traffic started moving into this platform. So that, that, that was a, yeah, best uh, experience, I think. Okay, thank you. Thanks for sharing. 